Hello, and welcome to Cancer Research Africa. Cancer Research Africa is pleased to present our special segment that will introduce our next generation of African cancer scientists. In this segment, we will highlight the cancer research of African postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, as well as clinical residents. My name is Abimbola Odadina. I am the host, producer, as well as media director of Cancer Research Africa Media. Today, we have a very, very special guest, and I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself. Well, uh, thanks, Pint, for the opportunity to be on the podcast. My name is Elo Chiku Ezewankwo. Currently, I work with the Cancer Research Initiative within uh, UCT's Faculty of Health Sciences as a research assistant. I am also a scholar and, and faculty member of the African Behavioral Research Center, Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta. I have recently completed a master's degree in public health in England. I am also uh, rounding up my thesis for another master's degree in medicine at, at the UCT. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, what is your area of expertise and what type of cancer research do you mainly focus on? Well, my research interests have evolved over the past four years uh, around population health, behavioral epidemiology, health systems, health services uh, research. Uh, presently, I apply advanced research methodologies such as realist methodology, participatory action research, uh, mixed methods research, and evidence-based co-creation in developing and evaluating homegrown solutions to inform policy and, and practice adjustments that address cancer health disparity. I am particularly enthusiastic about dynamic community-driven solutions to promote innovative strategies and reduce inequities surrounding not just you know access to and, and delivery of cancer care in, in minority and, and underserved populations but also global minorities participation in in clinical trials health policy and, and global health research okay perfect now tell us a little bit more about how you developed an interest towards cancer research well, I, I should say that my first shot at, at cancer research was in my final year, you know, as uh, an undergrad, not too long ago, though. My thesis explored behavior change interventions for their potentials to improve uh, post-treatment experiences in breast cancer survivors. The, the following year, I received funding from NCI Center for Global Health through Professor Dedino to, you know, for advanced uh, training on, on the principles and practices of, of, of behavioral research for cancer prevention and control in, in West Africa. So in, in the course of the program, I was privileged to attend two conferences, the inaugural global uh, Congress on Oncology Clinical Trials in Blacks and, and the fifth uh, biennial science of global prostate cancer disparities uh, uh, in, in Black men. So then at the, at the, at the, at the conference, I, I saw enormous opportunities for myself in, in mainstream cancer research, particularly uh, uh, as a health systems and, and global health equity uh, research. Uh, the rest, of course, they say is, is, is history. What do you think personally has helped you overcome any obstacles that you have experienced so far as an up and coming scientist in Africa? Well, uh, thus far, uh, my biggest obstacle was, you know, switching career, you know, trying to navigate from physiotherapy and, and rehabilitation sciences to health systems research, and then in particular, you know, health equity and, and, and cancer health disparities research. Uh, well, I'm going to say one thing, and that is networking. Well, I'm not so good at it at, at the moment, but I have made tremendous improvement, you know, in the last uh, two years, I, I should say. My success thus far has been a product of the good men and women around me. And thanks to Twitter as well, I have met so many incredible guys since I switched focus. Also, central to what we do, you know, as academics and, and researchers in training, in our discipline and building uh, mental resilience. You know, I, I, I really don't know, for example, uh, any funding application, you know, with say over 13% success rate, be they scholarships, fellowships and, and, and grant applications. So rejection is, is is very common, such that one is unlikely to succeed without a strong sense of discipline and and, and resilient you know mental health. And and with great respect to 
uh, you know, anyone that is currently going through, you know, mental health challenges. As well. Absolutely. Beautifully put. I love how you mentioned networking. Networking is very important, especially through social media. That is one of the top ways to put yourself out there, meet people that are the same interests as you, same career path and field, who can actually help you elevate in your career. So that's very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Now, please briefly describe to us the most impactful research that you've worked on so far, including the reason the research is important for African cancer patients. Well, I should say it's still a work in progress. I am currently working along with colleagues and experts in, in realist methodology and, and global health and research to operationalize the World Health Organization's guide to uh, cancer early diagnosis. Uh, particularly for prostate cancer early diagnosis in, in West Africa, using realist um, approach, drawing particularly from uh, participatory health research and, and evidence-based co-creation. The overarching goal is to strengthen capacity for early prostate cancer diagnosis in, in, in West Africa. The project was informed by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the tremendous uh, disruptive impacts it has had on early prostate cancer diagnosis in the region. Currently, we have done three incredible you know, papers. And um, at the moment, we are now exploring major funding opportunities to bring the project to uh, full scale. We target to develop COVID-19 responsive and, and context-specific you know, models to foster the collapse of existing structures supporting prostate cancer early diagnosis in the region in, in the aftermath of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Perfect. Now, what next? What should we expect from you relative to Cancer Research Africa? Well, uh, top on, on, on the agenda is obtaining a PhD in population health uh, sciences. And Well, uh, top on the agenda is obtaining a PhD in population health sciences or health systems research. Uh, then again, I have benefited enormously from many transatlantic collaborations, for example, between the United States and, and the Sub-Saharan region. So long term, my research career will deepen existing collaborations, allowing both regions to cultivate and, and benefit from mutual interest. So I look forward to contributing towards expanding their reach, even to the most distant path of, of, of the Sub-Saharan region. Now, what would you say are the top three pieces of advice that you would give to any other next generation African scientists or Africans who are considering a career in cancer research? Well, um, I should say, take initiative. Identify people that have succeeded or are currently succeeding in your, in your field of interest and, and reach out to them for collaboration. You not only learn when you collaborate, you also build and enrich your, your portfolio. I would also say, you know, cultivate a good you know, research routine. Indulge yourself regularly, you know, by following with recent papers in, in your areas of interest. Uh, lastly, and, and above all, I, 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 I should say that you, you learn research by, by doing research. So get your hands dirty. Okay, that was great, great advice. Now, just curious, when you were growing up, did you see yourself going down this path and working in the health industry, or did you want to do something completely different when you were younger? Well, I, I have always, you know, wanted to work in the in the healthcare sector. So, uh, uh, so when I, I I had the opportunity to. Uh, get into research and, and that was in, 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 in my undergrad, I think in, in, in I think uh, that should be in my third year, I, I seized I seized the opportunity. It was then that I, I saw, you know, you know, opportunities beyond uh clinical practice, right? You know, being uh, at the clinic and then attending to patients, right? And and I loved research. I, I love to ask questions. I love to find answers to you know, real issues uh, troubling you know my my society. So, so uh, I have always wanted to 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 do research, and 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 uh, I've always been on, on the lookout for opportunities that 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 will enable me to 
you know, succeed in, in that regard. Very good. Well, you're definitely on the right path for sure. Thank now, you. lastly, is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we go ahead and wrap up this episode? Well, just to say a big thank you, you know, again for the opportunity to be here. I really look forward to coming to the show. Thank you so much. Now, thank you for joining us on Cancer Research Africa podcast and YouTube channel. We have hope that you learned a thing or two about cancer research. Remember, the best evidence comes from research. My name is Abimbola Odedina. Thank you for joining us. And thanks for keeping cancer research going in Africa.